morning guys, morning here. Today I want to talk about my falling zombies. Um, Zabotur, the brand character, and yeah, we will go into the details of how this works in a moment. But to kick it off, we will just run through a park map quickly. For that, we'll clear the forest, take a look at the boss, clear some small stuff. We won't do the entire map, but I just want to show how the build in general plays and how strong it is. Because currently, like, I've had a lot of trouble with this build and a lot of problems to fix, which eventually I did fix. So. I now reached a point with the build where I can say I want to present it to the an audience because it is in a fairly good state by now. It is fairly fun to play. It is strong. It can do most of the content of the game. And yeah, overall I'm very happy with the build in this stage. And yeah, so let's just take a look. The build the but the general idea of the build is we are using brands to summon zo the falling zombies. The zombies are falling on the enemies and the enemies die. Um, the reason we are using brands is because of the interaction between brand recall and trigger bots. Because if we use brand recall to get the Arcanist brand to us, it will trigger Arcanist brand which triggers twice because of the trigger bots and also we are triggering the brand recall which means brand recall triggers twice which means overall with every like every time we trigger brand recall we trigger the zombies four times which means when we have seven brands we throw 28 zombies with every single throw which is an insane amount of zombies that fall down and it's just like very very good offense for fair little investment however there still is quite a bit of problems to solve with this build um, namely mana because our casts cost 2800 mana per second which is a lot so <laughs> we are using a Lavienga spirit and a Val clarity in tandem like whenever I have the right clarity, I use it. However, this map has faster buff expiration rate, which means that right clarity is only up for a couple of seconds. So it's not really as interesting. So I'm just clean with the flask here. Um, we add some support for flask charge generation so that we can use the flask on bosses, but I will show that later on. Basically is an increased charge generation mod on the belt and an anointment for mana flask charge generation. These have been empowered tier 16 bosses. Maybe even double empowered, I'm not sure. If the bosses are not empowered, we straight up one shot them. They can't stand a single slam of my zombies. I just want to get the fourth ritual here and then we can go into the deep dive of the character. Um, lately I have added a few normal zombies and two specters to the build or well just to make it better <laughs> because we had some open sockets when I swapped away from the magi and I thought what could I add to make the build better and one of the things is the turtle it is extremely slow however in content where it's important like ritual or ultimatum or bigger bosses it is very close and gives as determination, so I currently sit at like 25k uh, armor with flasks up and like 15k without when the turtles close, and that is a decent amount of like armor for a character that otherwise has no great physical defense. And the other specter is the Warcaller, I think his uh, the name is, or I think it's Warcaller. He gives the vitality aura and endurance charges so that we have some more physical defense and yeah, that's pretty much the most important part of it. Um, I think we're cl clearing the harvest here and then we finish it off. Now oh, I nearly did the entire map, but <laughs> that's whatever. 
I think I've shown how the build works in general. I don't want to keep reharvest right here. I have done pretty much all content in the game that is not uber bosses. Haven't tried uber bosses yet. I likely don't have the DPS at this point. We currently look at likely about 20 million DPS maybe. May maybe 10 million depending on how many corpses hit. However, with some more investment, I can push the DPS maybe to 60 to 80 million. And with a lot of investment like Mage Blood and stuff, we could maybe push 150 million DPS. But I don't really want to present. Oh, I have a I don't want to present a Mage Blood build as first build, so I wanted to solve the issues without Mage Blood first, and later on we can take a look at the high investment version in like. A couple of weeks when I decide to put match blood onto the build. Um, the version we're currently seeing here is with like 50 divines investment. However, I just recently upgraded a few pieces to make the character a lot more tanky. But even without that, um, I could comfortably level to. 95 I believe and then since I put more defenses into the build we made it to 97 without really trying we're just mapping chill and rarely dying at all so let's take a look at the gear of the character the main idea is in the trigger weapon we have a weapon where we have brand recall empower and enhance to boost the quality at level which boosts the cooldown recovery speed um, and the weapon just gives level to socketed support gems so that we have a level 5 empower and enhance with level 3 gems and then it gives the trigger for seconds and car speed that's all the mods that are important here mana is pretty nice but not mandatory um, I currently am working on another weapon with minion damage and plus one to all space skill games, but that is extremely expensive and will likely use about 60 divines for the weapon alone. So uh, this is the one I currently am using. I, in this setup now, I'm using the Brass Dome with uh, plus two to minion gems and four max resistances. There's no plus five max resistances, sadly. But before that, I was using this weapon, uh, this body armor, it is uh, plus three. These are not very expensive. I just have that price for no good reason on that. Um, a plus three body without links you can get for a couple of divines, if even. Like I think I've seen some for two divines with very good mods. You just have to link it with tainted fusings for like two more divines. So you can get a plus three body with decent mods for like five divines which is a very, very good deal. Um, then, where are we? Um, that's the body. Now I swapped over to a plus two breast dome. I lost like 12% damage from the plus one, but that's okay as long as your awakened gems are level five because you really want um, the awakened gems level five, like um, awakened melee fills gives intimidate which is 10 percent increased damage taken on the enemy like a minion damage is plus one to level so you want them to be level five if that is the case you can use a plus two breast dome for example however you lose quite some hp with breast dome because you cannot use the 15 percent hp mastery which you can use on a lot of the rare corrupted bodies other very important um support gems um if we just stick at the body for now is um, the flash, fresh meat support. Um, the buff is always up on the falling zombies for some reason. So we have a plus four base crit and 71 crit multiplier. Added on top is a free um, adrenaline and it's just insane. Like we get adrenaline, crit chance, crit multi. This gem alone gives 130% more damage, which is just ridiculous. Then we have the Arcanist brand and the Pulverize. The Pulverize also is extremely strong because of the AoE and the more damage. So yeah, these two support gems alone are like completely busted. Um, 
then we have currently an all uprising i was using a plus one all skill gems rare before nothing too fancy some stats but i wanted to add in a pride aura just to get some more damage into the build and it wasn't taking all that much defense off of me so i swapped over to all uprising the pride is in a slot with flesh and stone and arrogance so that the pride while costing no mana because of the odds uprising still gets the 20 percent increase aura effect from the arrogance then we have a flesh and stone which reserves half our life and gives um, maim on the enemies and makes them take increased damage which is a nice multiplier but more importantly we need a 25 percent aura uh, on life to go to low life or to half life because we are using petrified blood and the blood notch and immutable force combination to make us very very tanky um, if you want to play low life blood notch immutable force it's important to have some damage recoup you don't need a ring this crazy but you want like damage recoup on the ring maybe even in both rings but one ring plus these recoup nodes is enough because it gives up to six uh, 46 percent recoup which is enough to um, counteract the blood notch immutable force petrified blood combination so by still running a um, life last you rarely will need it and then the most important piece of the or not the most important but one of the strongest pieces of the character is the Montreal ghouls i've got one with car speed corruption which is fairly nice because you want a lot of car speed just to throw down the arcan spirits quickly but this weapon just gives a fuck ton of more damage and other than added on top of that it gives a hundred percent chance to explode even 50 percent of life as fire damage which is just it's so much like the explosion just clears everything it's so insane um but then much about the weapon we have an assassin's mark here dread banner flame dash dread banner just gives more impale which is nice then we have corrupting fever and second wind minefield and icicle man of sabotage i'll talk about that in a moment but very 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 important is to match the cooldown of corrupting fever which here is zero, uh, 1 1.01 seconds with the brand recall with the brand recall it's important that while we have five or more brands up the cooldowns are matching because we are using the chip away cluster jewels which give cooldown recovery depending on how many brands are up and we have two of these so with five brands we reach the 40 percent cooldown and reach 1.01 seconds um, these cooldowns heavily depend on your gear and you will always have to match the corrupting fever cooldown by um, changing the level of the second wind support and that very much depends on your cooldown reduction um, let's see we have the minefield and ice command of sabotage setup this one is just absolutely broken we use the demolition specialist ascendancy to give uh, 150 percent effect of auras from the mites and this means that every icicle amount of sabotage in gives a hundred percent increased crit chance so when we just throw one batch of mites next to the boss which is five we gain 500 percent crit for just throwing five mines it's so bonkers broken like it's crazy good um i could in theory add if i had the gem sockets i will do that when i swap to mage blood because it will do a lot of changes but for bossing as well we could put in the storm blast mine as well this one if we throw five icicle mines of sabotage and 10 storm blast mines you will gain 500 percent crit and 100 percent increased damage taken on the enemy just for throwing some mines next to it it's so much damage like you just just by throwing 10 mines there you double your damage basically not exactly double but like 80 percent more damage just by throwing some mines next to the enemy it's so insane then we're using the wild clarity here just to get more casts off we have some minion damage on the gloves um in the boots there is the specter setup and the race zombie setup um i wanted to have five enemies close because we are using a charm that gives onslaught when there are five enemies close and the trigger bots don't count as allies for some reason um, when five allies are close not enemies 
And for the Spectres, we're just using Res Zombie, Res Spectre, Minion, Life, and Meat Shield. I am um, thinking about taking out the Minion Life and just putting another, um, like, a Golem or something, something that increases damage. But I'm not sure yet. Because I don't really need the Minion Life. Um, and they are so insanely tanky, they just don't die. They just don't. Like, these Spectres likely have m even more life than these Zombies, and these Zombies have 40k here. If we put out that, they're still at 24k. And with the life from death cluster jewel, whenever an ally dies, all our minions um, recover 4% life, and we kill 28 Zombies per second. But So all of our minions recover 100% life every second. They're just invincible. They cannot die. I've put them into zero storms and it doesn't matter. They just don't die. Like extremely rarely. And yeah, so I haven't lost the... Like my I had, didn't have to re-summon my zombies in a hundred maps. They just cannot die with just this. I don't have any minion life except for this. And that's just 12% and here 15% from the cluster. So it's just so little and they're invincible. For the helmet, we have just a plus two minion helmet with some shenanigans. Um, the rings aren't very special except for the recoup. Boots are just resistances and life. Gloves are the same except for the minion damage. This is just an essence fracture. It shouldn't be very expensive to get. For the belt, we have the charges gain and the cooldown recovery. You don't need the cooldown recovery. If you don't have it, you just have to match the second wind cooldown doesn't really matter we talked about the amulet we have an anoint on the amulet for replenishing remedies which gives our leviangas more room to work because we gain three uh, two mana charges every three seconds and the leviangas only need seven with the belt we get about three charges every three seconds so we have a lot of time to use the leviangas because it has five uses as well and then with the generation on good uptime we get like seven or eight uses even and then we put some damage on the boss and maybe get nine or ten uses so we have a lot of uptime on this flask um i think i talked about most of this stuff i wanted to talk um one big thing is the elegant hoopness i am using i'm using this number which gives um, minion damage here 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 and here I don't even use these two. I did want to, but they are not as efficient as other possibilities here. So there's a few options for um, these jewels you can use. I use car speed here. I don't think I need it anymore, but I just it just feels good to have some car speed and use the 30% mana here. Otherwise, I just use the minion damage here. For the ascendancy, we pick the trigger bots, obviously the. Uh, mine aura and then I use ignite and shock immunity and 15% reduced damage taken from nearby enemies We could use the like clockwork for cooldown recovery, but this is um, not uh, Like the note is not as good as it sounds Because it's very difficult to match the cooldowns if you use this note So maybe when you have like a plus three weapon with the plus one all a level 4 in power and a level 4 in hands and a level 720 brand recall maybe then it's a good idea to use like clockwork but until then i don't really see a point actually we'll sell the two divine helmet here i think it's my old one yeah this one is the helmet i used before it's still very like very good you can get these for like fairly cheap and it's not much of a hassle i mean it cheap always depends obviously but yeah i feel like two divines for a plus two helmet with life and resistances is fairly good oh it cares <laughs> it cares only why that's okay don't don't care um otherwise okay one more interesting thing is i am using the impossible escape to get more max resistances here so we now with flask up reach 23k um, armor and 82 max resistances we would be at 83 with a breath storm of plus five and we could get some more resistances elsewhere but for now 82 feels very very good 25k armor feels very very good we have um, 500 life rack which feels 
pretty damn good together with like all the other mods and yeah what I want to say is this character overall feels very good to play at this point we can do the um, scream invitation to finish this off this won't be the uber version just the normal one but I want to show the damage of a boss and yeah I think that's it for the video let's take down the boss and finish it finish it off here As you can see, it takes like three, three charges of the zombies or three triggers, whatever you want to call it. Defense against this laser isn't as good, but it's okay. I actually don't know if I can tank this. I haven't tried. I actually I wanted to, but I think we don't get to here. No, oh, he's down. So yeah, this is the damage against the normal Eater of Worlds. At this stage of investment obviously I now am at a bit more investment but when the character was at yellow maps I got invited by a friend to clear his exarch and it was fine so yeah if you get the important pieces the mana um, recharge the brand cooldown recovery everything matched uh, the build just feels very very good it's just, it's just a very cool build um, however I have to put the disclaimer Currently, more or less the same build exists as Armageddon Brand, Armageddon Brand of Recall, and it feels like that's just the better option for the build. However, this one is just fun and cool, and you have falling zombies, which is fairly nice. So yeah, if you want to play this, and um, I didn't talk about, you want about 1.3k open mana for the Laviangas to just have a long duration. 1.5k would be even better. But in addition, I am using Mind Over Meta so that when I get hits in, that the Laviangas can just power through. That's all I wanted to talk about. If you have any questions about this build, feel free to ask. And yeah, thanks for watching and see you next time.